My name is John Dudley and I'm the chair of the International Day of Light Steering Committee. It's my great pleasure to be with you and to give you an overview of the International Day of Light and to present some of our specific objectives for this year, 2021. I'm just going to take a moment now and share my screen and give a short presentation of the International Day of Light. The International Day of Light is an annual observance of the United Nations, UNESCO, to raise awareness of the importance of photonics and light-based technology to achieve the goals of the UN system in areas such as education, well-being, and sustainable development. It was first proclaimed in 2017 and celebrated on May 16, 2018 in Paris. And since then, we've had uh, 2019 and 2020 editions of the celebration that have reached millions of people in more than 80 countries, and even on one occasion, a message from the International Space Station. This is the fourth edition of the International Day of Light. And like every year, the global aim is to promote how science and photonic science in particular can aid the United Nations goals in sustainable development. The UN crystallizes its objectives around 17 precise sustainable development goals shown in this slide. They cover broad areas such as addressing poverty, improving healthcare, ensuring infrastructure is sound and safe. And for us in photonic science, we're in a remarkable position because we can, in a way, contribute to achieving every one of these in, in some form or another. To give some specific examples, the, in the area of addressing hunger, the, the field of agri-photonics is, is uh, uh, a burgeoning uh, area of research and application which uses advanced remote sensing and spectroscopy to assess uh, crop health at a distance. Medical imaging techniques very often are based on photonic science and education now uh, not only requires uh, uh, basic local uh, tools such as affordable lighting to enable children to do study in the evening, but uh, more and more as we've seen in the last 14 months, our education system has relied upon the fiber optic and communications infrastructure, which is all laser and photonics based. This presentation, for example, would not be possible without the uh, optical fiber internet that uh, connects us all. Other areas where photonics plays a role in development are in solar power, the generation of efficient lighting, the uh, uh, structural monitoring of, infra of, of infrastructures such as bridges and buildings, the, uh, the advanced development and the enabling of the uh, Internet of Things and uh, everywhere connected, smart cities, environment, env environmental monitoring to understand climate change and global warming. And uh, on a more uh, general level, photonics and the photonics community have really shown leadership in science in creating a wide range of partnerships that are of benefit to society. The partnership of this International Day of Light, for example, brings together uh, public and private sector institutions, universities, international organizations uh, from around the world, all with the aim of consolidating activities on the 16th of May every year. Uh, of course, with the pandemic uh, beginning in 2020, the activities that we had planned for last year were uh, severely uh, impacted, but nonetheless, the enthusiasm of this community is fantastic. We had uh, over, uh, with events were shifted online rapidly, and we had over 300 discrete events in uh, around 80 countries with over 750,000 participants uh, in, in one form or another, with hundreds of thousands of engagements and impressions on social media. This year, many events are also held uh, virtually and online, 
and we're hoping for very similar global reach. Uh, we have already, as I'm preparing this, this talk, uh, we have uh, events planned in over 50 countries of all sorts from, uh, from uh, precise, from very focused uh, technical research uh, conferences to online presentations and competitions for young children. So we're looking forward to uh, a lot of success and please check out all our social media channels for, for what's going on. Uh, from a particular perspective of uh, science, the, the date of 16th of May was chosen uh, quite deliberately to celebrate the invention of the laser or the report of its first oscillation is probably more precise on 16th of May uh, in 1960. So this year represents 61 years since laser oscillation was first reported by Ted Maiman. The, the story of the laser is, is, is a wonderful example of how technology and industry work together uh, to, to create tools that are of uh, lasting benefit for the society. But every year brings other achievements into focus. And this, this historical aspect of the International Day of Light is really important because it allows us to look at the particular anniversaries that happen on a regular basis. For example, this year, 2021, in photonics represents 60 years of laser nonlinear optics, 30 years since the femtosecond Kerr lens uh, mode locked titanium sapphire was invented, and 30 years since the concept of, of the photonic crystal optical fiber. And events all around the world have or will be celebrating these anniversaries, not only this week for the International Day of Light, but all year. And this is a really important thing that even though the International Day of Light takes place on one particular day, you can associate events all year, providing they meet the goals of the the International Day. So if you're inspired by anything that you see in the next few days, then please go back to your own organizations, schools or institutions, and you can plan something uh, very similar later in the year, perhaps when things are easier to organize as well. The International Day of Light also reminds us that scientists have regularly shown social leadership in areas that bridge science and society. Charles Towns, for example, uh, worked in numerous ways to help the, the, uh, the government in areas of space exploration uh, and space policy. And Richard Feynman is well known for being involved in, in uh, investigating the, the Challenger disaster in the 1980s and in making some very important comments about how science and technology and uh, political objectives should work together to achieve goals. And from our perspective as individual scientists, we should not forget that we also have a responsibility in this, in this area as well. And this brings me to our 2021 campaign, which is focused on really uh, addressing the problems that we've all noticed in the last uh, year. And if we think about it for an extended period beyond that, where we've seen public confidence and trust slowly but surely decrease in all areas. And we've launched for this year a special campaign called Trust Science that you can read about on the website www.trust-science.org. And I urge you all to look at this because it's a very simple way in which you can make a statement about how you support the the, the, the role of a scientific method and evidence in making decisions and in determining policy. We have science leaders from around the world who have pledged their support. Uh, the many Nobel laureates, former director general of, of institutions such as CERN, presidents of scientific societies, science communicators, science popularizers, students, emeritus scientists from all ages, from all countries, have, have joined together around this common message, which is extremely important. So I, I, I stress again, please have a look at this and uh, please lend your support. It's multilingual 
and uh, it can be shared with all your, uh, within all your communities. In conclusion, I would like to uh, just wish everyone a fantastic uh, conference and conference event. I would uh, like to uh, express my personal thanks to uh, all the volunteers and scientists who uh, work so hard to make this International Day a success around the world. And I'd like to just remind you all of all the tremendous activities that are on social media, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and uh, which together uh, create a fantastic atmosphere. Uh, I think this weekend, of the International Day of Light will be uh, a spectacular example of, of how video conferencing and the internet and social media combine to allow us to join together as a community and to really enjoy a great day of outreach and science. Thank you very much. <laughs>